you once again for tuning in to KSU Gold. This show is being brought to you by Kentucky State University's College of Agriculture, Food Science, and Sustainable Systems. My name is Lindsay McGaha. I'm a media manager here at Kentucky State University, and I'm your host. And on this show, we give our viewers a peek of our faculty, our staff, and our students, and their efforts to continue our golden legacy of achievement here at Kentucky State University. On today's show, we're talking all about fashion. So we'll be heading over to the Landmark Farm where we'll learn how farmers take goods from the farm into fiber and into fabric. We'll also head over to the Goodwill where we will dress a student for success in sustainable clothing. But before we get there, we'll turn our attention to Dr. Joanne Bankston, who will give us everything she knows in family consumer sciences. So tell us, what is family consumer sciences? Well, family and consumer sciences really uh, it deals with people and families. Now, uh, what we we study things, uh, everything that is related to family or has something to do with family, and that's a number of different things. Uh, we study uh, within the field of family and consumer sciences. We study uh, family financial management and consumer education. We also study um, child development and family relations, human development, uh, housing and interior design. We, we, another area of study is uh, food nutrition. Food and nutrition is very, very important to our lives. Family consumer sciences used to be called home economics. Why is family consumer sciences a better name for this field of study? Uh, we changed our name several years ago, and the reason why that we, uh, one of the reasons why we uh, chose the name of family and consumer sciences, and this is for the, the discipline from across the country and within our associations, is because it does embrace the idea that we are undergirded in science. We are not just stitching and stewing or doing what your mother taught you. That may be okay too, but we are applying scientific principles uh, to the study of every area of the discipline. And um, uh, whether it's health and wellness, whether it health, wellness, diet, nutrition, um, the foods, uh, foods as well as we study all kinds of things about food. So if we were studying foods, uh, instead of just preparing food by whatever recipe, we would learn why we're doing it. What is the scientific principle behind something that we're uh, cooking? Or uh, why do we use certain equipment in the home? That's another uh, area that we study as well. Now, this field has primarily been dominated by women in the past, but what are your thoughts on breaking through those social norms to establish the idea that this field is for everyone? Well, actually, we have a number of men that are engaged in family and consumer sciences in, uh, in several of the areas. I'm thinking of a person that, uh, who has a leadership role in another state, and he probably runs family and consumer sciences, and he comes out of uh, apparel and textile merchandising, has a business background as well. But we have men uh, that are engaged in family and consumer sciences. And as you see, uh, there are lots of people who uh, we probably, uh, that are chefs or that ha that uh, do food and nutrition. Uh, there are people engaged uh, in um, uh, family financial management and uh, those areas. Um, and in addition to that, uh, there are people who, of course, uh, take our courses and need, and, and need to operate uh, a household or know how to uh, manage their, their budget, uh, manage uh, their, their food uh, situation. Uh, and other kinds of things that relate to family, as well as parenting our children. So um, I think that it's something, it's information that everyone needs. Uh, and there are a number of men that are engaged in our, our, in our field, in spite of the fact that it is uh, female dominated somewhat. You mentioned children earlier. Now, this is a field of study that most people think you need in middle school and all the way up to high school, but why is it important to grant this type of access to education at the collegiate level? Uh, because at, uh, at the collegiate level, not only, see, we study and we research uh, uh, the areas that I have discussed. Um, at the collegiate level, uh, uh, it's important to continue to, uh, to not only study uh, these areas, but it will help you, it will help a, a college student not only um, 
uh, operate in their basic everyday living. I mean, okay, here, let me give you a good example. Um, how many students know how to manage their budget, their money, their financial aid, uh, uh, understand use of credit, their debit card, the banking system. Uh, also, uh, I think, this is just maybe a little bit of a personal bias, I think that if we had more people who uh, had studied human development and parenting, that some of us would be better able to parent our children. Um, uh, that's just maybe a little bit of a personal theory, but I think that uh, uh, that's, uh, that's an uh, area. Um, food and nutrition, in our, in our uh, world today and in our country, we have a high incidence of, of obesity. And uh, certainly obesity uh, brings on illnesses, uh, some other kinds of things that perhaps uh, we could avoid. Uh, we, we're using a lot of processed food. Uh, we're using, uh, we're eating things perhaps in larger quantities. It gets bigger and better every time you turn around if it's fast food or something. So if we knew better how to handle um, our, our food and nutrition and also promote wellness, um, I think we'd have a healthier citizenry. Well, technology has changed quite a bit over over time and now we have apps you know on our phones where it gives you access to banking or it gives you access to Pinterest which allows you to you know design different outfits how has family and consumer sciences changed as technology has changed uh, we are incorporated we have incorporated uh, technology into the things that we do uh, and I, 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 in, a, in a little bit I will cite um, an article or at least say something about an article that appeared in the Atlantic Te technology has not only been um, uh, it's certainly something that we will continue to be utilizing forever and ever and it has uh, um, shall I say, mechanize many, many things. At the same time, we also uh, have some disadvantages to that too as well. But uh, we, uh, we have, if, you, if for example, you were designing uh, an interior, uh, you would use technology not only to promote some of your dimensions and uh, your orders that you would place with businesses, you'd use it in marketing, you would, could use it in CAD design uh, to design a room, but a person needs to know the theory behind this. They need to know how to be able to draw this. If you're doing it, if you're uh, doing um, fashion design, just because you can pull it up on an app, that certainly doesn't help you know how to draw it, how to construct it, um, uh, other kinds of things that are needed uh, for that field of study. So now keep in mind that we are preparing people uh, for jobs. Uh, we're preparing people to be able to not only operate uh, and, and manage their families, but we're also preparing them for jobs. So you need to know uh, everything that you could possibly know in that field to be able to function uh, in a work environment. So tell us a little bit about the new certificate programs that's preparing students to be able to have this hands-on training. So the certificate programs, we have two of those. One is in Family and Consumer Sciences and it incorporates a foods and nutrition course, uh, consumer economics and resource management, um, human development and uh, and also housing and and, um, and interior decor. Uh, so then the other certificate program is one in um, uh, elements of fashion uh, and interior decor and that incorporates a uh, design course, uh, design principles, uh, a course in um, apparel construction and analysis, uh, housing and home environment, as well as consumer economics and resource management. Well, I'm excited about the way that the Family Consumer Science Department is growing here at Kentucky State University. We're going to go to break, but you all stay tuned.
Dang State is a great school to attend, especially because of the small class sizes. You get that one-on-one -on -one experience with your teachers, your mentors. I really enjoyed being here at Kentucky State University, working and studying with the professors and students here who are very knowledgeable, very engaging, and very helpful. You're able to actually talk to the professors. They're really caring and understanding and want to see you succeed. You also get in the field earlier. As a freshman, you're able to go out to the farms. You're able to do research projects. After my undergrad degree in agriculture, I was looking forward to continue my studies. I was really interested in Kentucky State University and I love the research programs here. Kentucky State has prepared me for a career in agriculture because you get the experience of being able to do different research projects. You get to actually collect and analyze your data. So it was a perfect fit and um, really, really excited to be working in this field. Kentucky State University has had five name changes. In 1886, it was known as the State Normal School for Colored Persons. In 1902, it was changed to Kentucky Normal Industrial Institute. The name changed in 1926 to Kentucky State Industrial College for Colored Persons. In 1952, it was later changed to Kentucky State College. The school became known as Kentucky State University in 1972. to head out to the Goodwill with Dr. Young as she outfits a student in career wear. Hi, I'm Dr. Allison Parker Young and I'm Associate Extension Professor in Family and Consumer Sciences at Kentucky State University and I work with Extension Service and I also teach classes in Family and Consumer Sciences. Well, I'm really excited to uh, be at Kentucky State and to be working with our new certificate programs in Family and Consumer Sciences. We have two certificate programs. One is in fashion and home decor, and then the second one is in Family and Consumer Sciences. And as a uh, faculty member at Kentucky State University, I'll be teaching classes that deal with design elements for consumers, and I'll also be teaching classes in apparel construction. So I'm really excited that we'll be getting those started at Kentucky State. Um, so for instance, with the uh, apparel construction aspect of it, part of what we go through in the class deals with identification of textiles and identifications of fibers and then based upon that information you then would uh, use that to determine how you would produce your garments for your family and ultimately we would like to get some entrepreneurship going with our students and the certificates. So for instance I have examples of uh, garments that are made of different fibers. So for instance this garment is made of silk and so silk is, uh, and silk is something that in most instances is very delicate. Uh, there are some challenges to uh, constructing it, but in uh, textiles and clothing, we consider silk as the queen of all fibers. It's associated with luxury, associated with uh, royalty. So we'll be uh, utilizing that in our classes. Today we're here at Goodwill in Shelbyville, Kentucky. They're very gracious to let us be here today. And the reason that we're at Goodwill is for several reasons. First of all, Goodwill is an organization that assists those that need additional job training. And the other reason that other reasons we're at Goodwill today is because it is very much a ideal place to practice sustainable fashion practices and also very good for your finances. Sustainable fashion is important because it's a way in which we can assist the uh, health of the planet. 
by not having so many clothing and apparel items end up in landfills. It's a way of recycling clothing and textile items in a way, again, that uh, is in keeping with our practices with the College of Agriculture at Kentucky State University. So we strive to uh, teach academically and through extension ways in which to be sustainable in terms of producing uh, raw goods and also then how we can be sustainable with consumer usage of those finished products. I'm really excited to be here at Goodwill today with the Extension Associate from Kentucky State University, Anita Kasanga, and she's going to be here and work with us in terms of looking at some looks from the inventory at Goodwill that are career appropriate and also good for social occasions. And again, they're sustainable in terms of being recycled and also very good for the budget. Wow, let's see what you have here today. Anita, this is a really good look for you. It's a neutral, and so that's always appropriate in the job uh, in the job setting. A nice jacket and a nice pair of pants with a nice crisp crease in them, and the shoes also are a neutral color. So uh, I think this is a really good look for you on your career job. So. Wow, Anita, I really like this look on you too. Uh, you have a lot going with it and the point of fact that it is a sheath dress. So it's one piece and so that's really easy to just get up and put on in the morning. And the other aspect of it too is that the sheath is made of two kind of basic colors, black and white. And so then you can just use pops of color with it. So you can wear it on the weekend and you can also wear it to work. So the way you have it right now is a very suitable look for the job. Thank you. Wow, Anita, this is really a fun look for you. You know, ethnic prints are very popular right now. They call them either ethnic prints or tribal prints. But either way, this is really on point. You have some nice colors here. It's all one color, but then you see the uh, diversity of the print where it goes from the larger scale down to the smaller scale. So it gives more interest to uh, the item. And then with it having a V-neck, if you'd like, you can really add some fun jewelry, some fun earrings with it. And then the point of fact that you have the uh, black pumps on. Actually, if you put a uh, cardigan over it, this could be an appropriate look for work. But the way you have it, it'll be fun for, you know, a fun day or night out. Kentucky State University is among the top universities in the South according to recently released 2017 U.S. News and World Report College Rankings. I chose to attend Kentucky State University because I could begin studying with them while I was still working after college. 
Working at the aquaculture lab at Kentucky State University is a lot like the environment that you're going to encounter in an aquaculture research lab. This is a place where you come to become a scientist, to get the training, to meet the peers who are going to be your contemporaries throughout your career, and to really learn to take joy in your work as well as pride. And I'm grateful to have been a part of that here at Kentucky State University. Thank you all for staying with us. Today we're at the Landmark Farm here in Sharpsburg, Kentucky, and we're at the seventh annual Felt Loom Workshop. And today we're talking a little bit about farmers who take their goods and take them from the farm into fiber and then in, turn them into fabric. We've got Lynette Freytag here, who's not only a farmer, but she's also the co-founder and the inventor of the Felt Loom. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the seventh, the seventh annual um, felt loom workshop that you have here. Okay, uh, we developed this workshop because we were selling felt looms to other farmers across the uh, Kentucky and the U.S. And uh, we had a number of them out in the field, and we felt like we needed to find out how people used them and what their uh, successes and problems were. And if we got together every year, it would be a good thing to make the loom be a better product. What do you hope that those who participate in this program are able to take away from it? They always have a great learning experience and they always have a new vision for product development and for use of their fibers from their farm to fashion or to technology. We're having an e-textiles workshop this weekend, so we're gonna bring these farmers from the farm to fashion, to from farm to technology and fashion. All right, why do, why do you think this type of workshop is important for local farmers here in Kentucky? Because uh, we need to be able to have our farms and our lifestyles sustainable. And uh, if we don't have products that can produce income, we can't do that. And all over our state, all over our country, we need to bring our creativity back and use it in a productive way to bring income. And these products that you can design and make with our felt loom can give you that opportunity. Now, the felt loom has changed the way that a lot of farmers produce goods and how they do business. What is the felt loom? Felt loom is a machine that uh, has uh, needles that go up and down, and the needles have little barbs, and so they take the fibers and they connect them together without yarn. So you can take your fibers from your sheep wool or llama or different rabbits or different things or you can even take other fibers, synthetics, polyesters and stuff and mix it with it and make fabric from scratch on your farm. How has it helped farmers become more sustainable? Because it gives them products to sell that they can have that they can get an income from. Years ago if you had to fiber animals and you were a spinner and you had to spin all the fibers, you couldn't even pay for the feed from your yarn. So you had to find better ways to produce income from them. Now, Kentucky State University has always done a small farmer's grant. And you received a grant not only from the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, but also from Kentucky State University to further your business um, here. Tell us a little bit about both of those grants and how they've been helpful. The Ken, uh, Kentucky Ag Development um, Board has been fabulous for us because they saw the need for us to be able to know that we couldn't get value um, out of our products without having some kind of manufacturing that went into it. So they, help, they helped us by funding uh, our equipment to be able to wash the wool and comb it and make it straight and pretty. And uh, that was significant because then we could have fibers that we could do what industry did on a large scale, we could do it on a small scale on our farm here in Kentucky and that is very important. And then uh, the grant that we got from Kentucky State University uh, put the finishing touches on things. Like I took some of my product one time to Woodford Reserve because I wanted to sell it in their gift shop. And um, they were excited because it was Kentucky, but they looked at me and said, oh, but it looks crafty. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna go make it look professional. So the grant that Kentucky State uh, University uh, permitted us was to have a machine that cut perfect circles so it didn't look crafty. It cut perfect squares. It, it funded our die cut machine which cost $5,000 and that's not easy to come up 
with from a farmer to just improve your quality. So it's helped us significantly and we will have our first really true landmark farm line with uh, wearable art, wearable home decor, or home decor that is designed with um, cutting perfect shapes. So our product will have the quality we need it to have. Tell us a little bit about the style show that you have coming up tonight. Oh, we have um, a style show where the designers, the people that make things with the felt loom, are um, bringing their designs, their finished products, and we have a regular style show like you would have in New York. And we have models that have fashion, um, their hair's beautiful, their makeup's beautiful. They have everything that it needs to make them look very professional because our products we make in Kentucky are wonderful and we have to present them that way. And if we just hang a jacket on a hanger, it doesn't look near as good as it does on a model. So we're having a style show and everybody can bring their wares and the models will wear them and then the farmers can go home with a great photo shoot of their work that they can use for their marketing. Well, you all stay tuned because we're going to head down to the fiber mill where we'll get to check out her fiber line. We're here at the fiber mill and let me tell you, they really believe in being fashion forward here. Tell us a little bit about some of your fashion line. Okay, we have developed a, a functional fiber art line from the fibers from our sheep on our farm. And we wanted to be able to make the whole product from the shearing the animals to the finished goods that we could sell on the farm. So this is our whole line where we have wearable art and home decor line. And um, it's really been fun because uh, we've worked to improve it constantly because we wanted to make it look professional and not crafty. So we uh, actually got a grant from Kentucky a State University to um, help us buy a die cut machine that makes the shape the same and perfect every time. So we have a shape that is hard, very hard to cut out by hand and to make it quality. So now we have this little bowl that's perfectly cut out and it like this when it's all together. Oh, so it looks good. So we put the little snaps on it and it can store flat or it can be a little bowl or flower pot or whatever you want it to be. And so now we can sell quality. Very fashionable. Thank you so much for inviting us on your farm and for showing us everything you've got here. We really appreciate it and best of wishes to you. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. We hope you all have enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out KSU Gold every Monday at 8 o'clock p.m.